Okay, excuse the state of me. It is the 1st of February, which means no purchase January is over. And I want to come on here just to fill you in. Um, some of you Irish cynicists out there think that I may have failed and maybe you're right. I'm gonna take you through what I learned, what I'm gonna change, what I'm not gonna change, and let you know whether I failed or I made it through No Purchase January alive. So, um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram will know that I, toward the end of December, decided that I was going to embark on a journey of not purchasing anything for 31 days. Basically, I spent a lot of money on myself in December. I actually made the decision with my family that we would keep our presents small this year because all of us were broke and we went way overboard last year. Myself and Connor decided to do no presents and we booked a holiday instead, South Africa, in 30 days. Yeah, so I had started December with this excited idea of not spending too much money, of making it to the end of the month with money and failed miserably. I ended up just spending all the money on myself and going crazy with uh, purchases for myself. I ended up feeling quite guilty and not very good by the end of December and wanted to start the new year with a little bit of self-control and thing, I wanna step out of my comfort zone and challenge myself in some way to begin the year. So basically I told my Instagram followers to keep myself accountable. What I noticed, so I noticed that I spend so much time online window shopping. I thought it was kind of just before I go to bed, I'll go online for maybe an hour and have a bit of a browse. It was actually, way worse than that. I would, anytime I had a bit of time, I'd be on my phone literally going through my basket and looking at the things that I'd added to my basket, like freaky obsession. Um, I was also really surprised at how easily I would click purchase with zero regard to my financial status or the money that was in my bank account. I would literally see 600 euro in my bank account. It could be the second week of the month. I'd still have two weeks until my next paycheck and I would see 600 euro in my bank account and I would literally see that as dollar sign 600 euro that you can spend online. It's basically complete irresponsibility. Um, I don't have another explanation it's embarrassing, it's immature, it's irresponsible and I realised that it's not the way I want to live my life. Another thing was the emotional shopping, so I've also done a lot of um, videos and chat on my social media and YouTube about my um, eating habits and how I have gone through ups and downs of binging and restricting and a lot of it is related to my happiness or emotional well-being that unfortunately is not localized to food alone um, I tend to be in a bad mood or something small goes wrong and my instinct is treat yourself you deserve it get yourself something nice and cheer yourself up this is a daily daily thing. So obviously in life we come across things every day that will trigger something small or put you in a bad mood. Unfortunately, I'm not a millionaire yet and I can't afford to be cheering myself up every day by spending money on myself. So that was something else that I was really shocked by. There was a day that I was packing a bag to stay in Connors and I found an Anine Bing t-shirt with a tag on it that I forgot that I had bought. Now, those t-shirts are about 70 euro. I think they're well worth the investment and I'm not going to stop buying those kind of things. But I was again embarrassed that I had bought something and completely forgotten about it. It's not something that I do a lot, but the fact that it even happened once 
again i will reiterate and stress that i do not make a lot of money i still live at home I should be saving to move out and buying a t-shirt for 70 euro and forgetting that I purchased it is unacceptable behavior. So as the weeks went on, obviously I was noticing a lot of unhealthy or negative habits that I had, but this just made the challenge all the more rewarding. There's a lot of character building involved that I'm excited about now. There's a few things that when I discussed it with my mom recently that really stuck out to me. One of the things obviously, the less time I spent online, I would obviously avoid online shopping. Not completely, but it was torture to go online and know that I wasn't able to click the purchase button at the end. So I had so much more time. This time was spent working i was so much more excited about work i was getting so much more work done which motivated me even more and um, it gave me a little bit more energy mentally being off the screen i was feeling a lot more inspired and creative at night time i was reading i got through loads of books it was such an amazing feeling being able to afford the everyday lunches, coffees, meeting a friend. Not that I ever held myself back from this before. I really don't know how I afforded it all. Um, but that I was able to do those things without having to worry about my card being declined. That alone was like jackpot. This is amazing. Also noticing things that like that Anan Bing t-shirt, things that I have that I don't wear. The more I purchase, the more I don't appreciate the things that I have. Just being able to have fun with the stuff that I have and style clothes that maybe I've only styled one way and was able to style them loads of other ways. So that was a lot of fun and it was actually not a negative thing in the end. The biggest thing for me that I learned from No Purchase January and the, the most life-changing thing was the lack of guilt. So just like with food and eating there's that sense of guilt when you overindulge and similarly purchasing beyond your means it's not cool the guilt that i experience massively outweighs the short-term happiness that i get from clicking that purchase button and receiving packages it makes me feel weak it makes me feel overindulgent greedy irresponsible all of those feelings are not healthy feelings to be having about yourself on the daily and um, so being able to eliminate all of those feelings made it just completely worth it yes i am going to change how easily i click that button the amount of time i spend online shopping to see it as a treat and to try and live within my means the great thing now is that also I can style the clothes that I have and not constantly need more because I can see all the lovely stuff I already have. Also less time on social media because obviously social media is a massive trigger for me. Seeing things that other people have that I want. The swipe up button is a killer for me. With PayPal, it's all so easy. You don't even have to get your card. You just click purchase. It leads you. It takes like four clicks to make a massive purchase and a massive dent in your bank account. The whole thing about external acknowledgement I found as well was quite obvious that I would really like to make sure that when I'm purchasing something, it's for myself. It's not for Instagram. It's not for YouTube. It's because I love it and that I can afford it. It shouldn't be about self-image or creating an image. I should just be myself, authentic, and my purchases should reflect that authenticity. So to recap, a list of things that I learned. Time spent window shopping online. The swipe up on Instagram is the devil. Having more time to read and work is so awesome. Not spending all of your money before the end of the month is cool. No guilt 
post-purchase feels amazing. Being able to enjoy the stuff I have and also declutter is such a freeing feeling. My attention span was way better without being on the screen 24 seven. I was more in tune with what I wanted to purchase rather than purchasing what everyone else has. And a massive thing, noticing what was an emotional purchase or when I wanna purchase something, noticing it, is it a trigger from something that happened that day or something that happened that week? Definitely something that I've learned with food and now I can also relate it to my shopping addiction. A good way to really tune into what is going on in my week and being more mindful in my shopping. So, I feel like it was pretty transformational. The answer I know you're all waiting for is did I get through the whole month without purchasing? And I'm gonna be honest, no, I didn't. So you'll think after all of that, uh, patting myself on the back that I got through it. So there was a bikini that I really wanted for um, South Africa. There was a pre-order button, so I knew I wasn't gonna get it if I didn't order it in January. So I ordered it, I felt awful, but I'm still pretty proud of myself that that was the only purchase I made in January. I won't be getting it until uh, the end of February. So I'm hoping that that kind of doesn't count, but I know I did kind of fail, so. Sorry. To all my Irish cynicists out there, I'm sure you're delighted that I failed. At least I'm not letting you all down. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it didn't waffle too much. Please do subscribe and like uh, the video if you did. And loads more Q&A style videos coming up this month. We have South Africa on the 1st of March and we'll be doing so many YouTube travel style videos. Thanks so much for watching and don't swipe up.